After testing the NWA 130BE, I finally got the opportunity to check its better equipped sibling, the WBE660S, which comes neatly packed and you can also see the metallic bracket and screws. There is no power cord because the idea is to rely on a PoE switch or adapter. But you can see that there is no DC in port. No, no. We actually get a USB-C port. So, we can use our own universal charger to power up this Wi-Fi 7 access point. That's marvelous. We also get a 10 gigabit port, which sits next to a 1 gigabit port that sticks out a bit like a sore thumb. Well, at least one supports 10 gigabits per second. We will see just how fast the Wi-Fi 7 access point can get in the dedicated review and test video. And yes, I will include the multilink operation performance as well. The bottom side of the device is made out of a thick metallic alloy, while the top is made of plastic and to open it up we do need to remove the 6 screws from the bottom. There is no warranty seal, so all is right in the world. I expected the top to just pop off like it did on the TP-Link AAP663, but I did have to rely on a prying tool to detach it. Don't use a metallic one as I did because it will inevitably leave some marks on the plastic case. We should not be able to see just how thick the metallic part is, and we also get a good look at the PCB with its aluminum covers and multitude of antennas. I assumed that the antenna plate is attached to the other side of the PCB, so I removed the screws holding it to the plastic section of the case and then I attempted to detach it. It didn't really go as planned because as you can see the antennas are separated from the PCB by a metallic heat spreader. So yes, we do need to detach each antenna. I do thank my lucky stars that none of the antennas are soldered to the board because otherwise this video would stop here. Then again, at the price point of the WBE660S, I expected to be able to detach the antennas. Now let's try to remove the PCB. Whoops, I forgot to detach one lone antenna. Now it should come out easily and we can see the rear side of the PCB as well. The metallic heat spreader remains attached to the plastic section of the case and it's held by some screws. I took out four of them, but there is one in the middle as well, so don't forget about it, as I did. Then the heat spreader can be removed and we can see the intricate antenna design. I do need to mention that Zyxel does advertise a smart antenna approach, which should significantly help with the interference. Then it was time to remove the aluminum covers from the bottom side. I just took them out out of principle because there is nothing of interest to us on this side. Then again, maybe some of you will find it easier to fix the access point somewhere in the future using this video. Anyway, moving back to the other side, I also removed the aluminum covers here and you can finally see the main components. As usual, I will go through each of them, so do pause at any time to get a better view. That's all for now. This is definitely a very robust device which seems well designed so to stick around for the testing video which should come out very soon. Thank you for watching and see you next time.